Hey everyone, welcome back to another devlog for Project Onyx. This month I mainly focused on fixing bugs, but I also added quite a bit, so without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing I worked on this month was controller settings. My map designer is a controller player, and I would like to release on consoles, so I thought it was as good of a time as ever to work on that. I started out with the aim assist. I've tried to make aim assist systems in the past, and while yeah, they worked, they just felt off. But this month, I came across this GDC talk talking about how Insomniac Games implement an aim assist in their games. This is quite possibly the best GDC talk I've watched, and it helped a ton. With that talk, I was able to implement aim assist, and I think it feels pretty good. It's definitely not perfect, obviously, but it's way better than my previous systems. After I got aim assist working, I added hold to use for controllers. I realized when testing the aim assist that when trying to reload, I would pick up items that were near me instead of reloading. So I made it to where controllers have to hold the interact key to, well, interact. In the future, I will add settings to control the length of the hold, as well as the ability to make any controller keybind hold or toggle so your controls can be tailored to you. When adding the aim assist, we found that the ice grenade wasn't effective against controller players, and that was a simple case of function order. I was doing the aim assist logic after the freeze limiting code, so it wouldn't be limited properly. But I fixed it, so it's all balanced now. The last thing I did for controllers was implement a response curve. This makes it easier to make those accurate movements in the center of the stick, but still be able to move quickly at the edge of the stick. There is also acceleration, but you still need that fine level of movement without it. All of this together makes controller aiming really come together. The next thing I shifted my focus to was the customization. A few months ago we realized that the armor wasn't properly replicating. This came down to the fact that I was using maps to save the armor, and maps can't be replicated. I had found that if you put a map in a structure and replicated that structure, it would work. So either they fixed that, or when I tested it, I was somehow wrong about it. But nevertheless, it wasn't working and had to be fixed. So instead, I used an array, and each element of the array is a specific armor piece. This required quite a decent rewrite of my armor code, but in the end, it works, and everyone can now properly see each other's armor customization. This ended up causing a few bugs, like the armor not loading properly. At first, it seemed like it wasn't saving properly, but I found out later that it was just using the wrong variables. So, now the armor saves, loads, and replicates properly. After that fiasco, I worked on some general UI quality of life changes. The first thing was the weapon indicator. Now it shows percentage for the weapons that need it, and it'll also be able to show infinite ammo based on the game mode options. I also added some damage numbers, to help with callouts and also just weapon damage testing. In the menu, I added the post-game carnage, so that you can see everyone's stats at the end of a match and compare how you did. This will be receiving a huge update next month, but more about that later. I also added an option for settings to have default values, so if you change a setting but you forgot what the default value was, you can now reset it to the default. The last UI change I made was this save game mode button. When in matches, you'll be able to click both of these buttons if you'd like, and it'll download the map and or game mode, so you don't have to go fishing for it later. This really helps for those custom games that you really like, but don't want to hunt it down. I got the download game mode button working, and I will get the download map button working when I work on the creative mode. I also fixed a bug where you could use equipment while using an ability, which made for a pretty interesting bug. I also finally got around to updating the equipment visuals. Before, they were gray, and it was hard to tell what was what so I finally updated them. Now, all the boosts have materials, and the Healy Beam and Deployable Shield have their colors too. Because of this, I also updated the Healy Beam and Deployable Shield emitters. They now play some slight idle animations, and the Healy Beam now has healing beams that go to every player that it is currently healing. The biggest thing I worked on this month was probably the game modes. I did five game modes. Capture the Flag, Domination, Juggernaut, Oddball, and Infection. I technically already had Oddball and Infection, but there were some settings that needed to be implemented in order for them to be fully playable. Out of all of these, Capture the Flag was probably the most complex one. I had to deal with spawning and dropping flags, returning and contesting and capturing flags. There's still a few bugs and tweaks needed, but nothing that can't be done in a couple of minutes. I did a few changes to some of the abilities and equipment, the most notable being the Thruster. Previously it was very jank and could be broken pretty easily. If you were standing on a ledge, or performed certain button combinations, you could send yourself flying. This was because while standing on ground, I applied more force to the player because of friction. 
This would allow them to go the same distance, but if standing on a ledge, there isn't enough ground for the friction to slow you down, so you'd go flying. And while being funny at times, it ended up being more annoying than funny. So now, it's setting your velocity over time, which feels so much better and so much more reliable. And as an added bonus, it feels more arcadey, which I always felt the old version didn't have. This month, we also got three new maps in. Pathos is a small 1v1 and 2v2 map. Horizon is more of a 4v4 team-based map, but it also supports every game mode. Speedway is also a good 4v4 map and supports every game mode. As the end of the month grew closer, I decided to work on some quality of life features. I decided to add bullet whizzes and impact sounds. These really help to convey to the player that they're getting shot at, and in the future, they'll have unique sounds per weapon, so you will be able to tell what weapon you're being shot at by. I finally got around to implementing the first person shield mesh, and now they all also flare when you take damage, which is just another form of feedback that you're taking damage. I want to give the player as much feedback as I can so that there is no confusion as to what is going on. One of the last things I did was a simple particle effect when player's shield boost breaks, which again, just gives more feedback to players about other players. During our test session, we noticed that new players would break in the lobby, and I had no idea why. Over time, I realized that if players would customize, it would fix the issue, and after debugging 50 different things, I finally found the issue. Want to guess what it was? It was a singular comma. In my default values for new players customization, there is a comma separating the presets, and there is a comma after the last preset. Unreal Engine doesn't really care about this comma, so I never realized it was an issue. However, PHP cares about that comma, so it ended up breaking my backend. With that fix, players now properly load and don't break. Well, that brings us to the end of this devlog. It was a lot of bug fixing and quality of life changes, but they go a long way to make the game feel better. My main focus this month will be anything related to menus. This will include things like stat tracking, viewing profiles, challenges, credits to unlock customization, and so on and so forth. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.